Hi guys! So we are going to finish Ada Twist today, um, and I'm really excited to find out how it ends. Chapter 15. The dark clouds were looming closer, and Ada could see the far-off trees swaying in the wind. A storm was coming. Soon that wind would reach the factory, and when it did, everything would change. The eddy that now trapped Uncle Ned would collapse, and he would be set loose from its grasp. Then, who knows where he might fly. Hurry, Arthur, said Ada. We're running out of time. Arthur grabbed a tennis ball. Thwack! The ball lobbed into the air and soared gently over Uncle Ned and right past him. It dropped to the ground with a gentle thud. Too hard, Arthur said as he adjusted his grip. Try it again. Thwack! This time the ball arched it high into the air. Uncle Ned reached out and grabbed it. The crowd cheered. Uncle Ned took off his helmet and put the tennis ball inside. Keep going, said Ada. Thwack! 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 Arthur hit ball after ball in the air. One after another, they flew close enough for Uncle Ned to catch and put it in his helmet. As Ada had hoped, Uncle Ned dropped a tiny bit lower in the air. The plan was working. The crowd went wild. Yay, they cheered. Arthur, Arthur. There's Uncle Ned and his helmet full of tennis balls. Like his favorite tennis player on center court at Wimbledon, Arthur Twist took a deep breath and focused. Thwack, thwack, thwack. Arthur hit the tennis balls perfectly. Uncle Ned missed a ball, but then caught the next two. He added each ball to his helmet. He dropped a little lower. He hovered a few centimeters out of the reach of Bo. Bo stretched as far as he could, as long as his arms could go. I can almost reach you, yelled Bo. Hurry, Arthur, the storm clouds are coming. Indeed. Dark clouds moved closer and closer till thwack. One more, yelled Ada. Thwack. With perfect precision, Arthur lobbed a ball high into the air. The ball soared up, 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 and in and into Uncle Ned's outstretched arm. Uncle Ned grabbed it. He plopped it onto the pile of tennis balls in his helmet. Uncle Ned dipped towards the ladder as Bo reached and reached and reached. There's Bo trying to reach that string. Chapter 16. Just then, a large dragonfly zipped past Uncle Ned's head. One purple marten spied the dragonfly and zoomed after it. Swoosh! The bird swooped past Uncle Ned's right ear. Swoosh! The purple marten zoomed past Uncle Ned's left ear. They fluttered and tumbled through the air like acrobats. Just as Bo's fingertips touched the tip of Uncle Ned's shoe, the dragonfly landed on Uncle Ned's nose. Help! he cried, dropping the helmet and slapping his face. The helmet crashed to the ground. The green balls hit the hot, steamy asphalt and bounced in every direction. Boing, boing, boing. The lemurs, monkey, and ostrich chased the balls right into the crown. People shrieked and eeked. It was chaos. Ada and Iggy and Rosie watched in horror as Uncle Ned popped higher in the air out of Bo's reach. Help, he yelled. Do something. The tennis balls bounced around like gas molecules, spreading out in every direction just like the molecules that spread out from Arthur's hot, stinky shoe. Ada remembered her experiment. And what? And what? She had learned. The hot shoe was stinkier than the cold one. At least the stinky one had reached Ada's nose faster, and then the stink of the cold shoe. That meant the hot air molecules spread out faster than cold air molecules. Ada flipped open her notes. There it was, the answer to the problem. Ada looked at the hot black asphalt down below Uncle Ned's head. The surface sizzled and heated the air above it, which rose in gentle waves, stinky, nose-burning, asphalt-reeking waves. And that's when Ada Marie Twist knew exactly what to do. There was no time to lose. Chapter 17 Quick, shouted Ada, grab the hose. Ada and Iggy ran to the fire hose, which was laying on the hot pavement next to the truck. No, said Rosie. Remember what will happen? You will knock Uncle Ned out of the eddy and he'll fly into the wind. No, he won't, said Ada. Trust me. 
She grabbed the end of her fire hose. Iggy grabbed the hose behind her. Rosie looked doubtfully but jumped in line behind Iggy. Hit it, B, yelled Ada. B flipped the switch on the pumper truck and a heavy spray of water burst out of the hose. It was more powerful than Ada had imagined. The three friends struggled to control the hose, but they held tight. Get ready, Bo, Ada yelled as she pointed at the hose and the asphalt just below Uncle Ned. The water splashed over the hot surface, and instantly, Uncle Ned plunged downward. It wasn't much, but it was just enough. Bo reached out and grabbed him by the foot. B flipped the, off the water, and the hose flopped to the ground. Uncle Fred scrambled up the ladder, grabbed the rope dangling from Uncle Ned's wet, waist. We got him, yelled Uncle Fred. The crowd cheered again. How did you do that? asked Uncle Ned. I remember that hot air takes up more room than cold air, so we cooled down the asphalt with water that cooled the air just above it that made you drop enough to grab your foot. There he is, being grabbed by the foot. Well done, said Uncle Ned. Now, can I get out of these pants? But there was no time. Just then, a strong gust of wind blasted into the courtyard and blew up dust and leaves and all away. The whirlwind was gone. The heavy raindrops splattered the asphalt, then another, then another. Raindrops began to fall faster and faster, and the crowd scattered. Uncle Fred tied Uncle Ned's rope to the bumper of the zoo bus, rounded up the zoo animals, the questionnaires, Ada's mom, and brother hopped onto the bus. In a few minutes, Uncle Fred stopped at the twist house on Milk Lane. Thank you for rescuing me, said Uncle Ned. If it weren't for you, I'd be eaten by birds and halfway to Timbuktu by now. You're welcome, said Ada, as she waved goodbye to her Uncle Ned, Uncle Fred, Iggy, and Rosie. Uncle Fred honked and headed down the street, and Uncle Ned floated above the zoo bus. Arthur ran up the steps to the front porch of the Twist House. Ada and Miss Twist followed as thunder rumbled in the distance. Thanks for letting me use your racket, said Ada. You could be a tennis champion someday, like Arthur Ashe. Maybe, said Arthur, but you should stick with science. Arthur opened the front door and stepped into the house. He paused and smiled at Ada. Actually, he said, let me know if you want to play some tennis sometime. You weren't that bad. Plus, you have to, use, but you have to use your own racket and stay out of my stuff. Arthur tried to look mad, but it didn't work. Ada grinned at her brother as he shut the door, leaving Ada and her mom alone on the porch. Just then, the sky opened up and rain poured buckets onto the roof of the porch and splashed into puddle, puddles in the yard. The smell of rain hit Ada's nose, and she closed her eyes for a moment and breathed in. It was not the kind of smell that curled your toes. It was warm and cozy that mixed with her mom's perfume and was one of the best things in the world. Ada and her mom sat and watched the rain plop and splop and splash on the grass. Her mother put her arms around Ada and gave her a hug. Ada, she said, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you when you tried to tell me about Uncle Ned. I just didn't get it. Ada smiled at her mom. I know, said Ada. You know I'm very proud of you, said Miss Twist. And I, I know, said Ada. There's Ada and her mom. <clears throat> How do you know what I'm going to tell you, asked Miss Twist, because you already did, said Ada. Things my mom tells me. One, the bathroom is not a science lab. Two, the pantry is not an ant farm. Three, don't put my toothbrush in the earthworm box. Four, don't take Arthur's things. Five, I love you. Ada smiled. See, she said, I always write down important things, so I'll remember them. But I have a question. Just one, asked Miss Twist. Well, said Ada, do big brain drops taste different than little ones, she asked. And why is the sky gray, but the air in the why? And why is rain gray in the air, but clear in my ham? Why do earthworms crawl on the sidewalk in the rain? What if? And that's where it ends. And that is the end of Ada Twist and the Perilous Pants. 
uh, first grade. The next book that we would read is Iggy Peck. So I will read Iggy Peck for you on Monday. But Iggy Peck's chapter book has not come out yet. It doesn't come out until May. So we're going to take a break from chapter books for a while. And then as soon as I get um, Iggy Peck's chapter book, we will start that. Bye, first grade.